Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley, and today's broadcast, The Signs in the Skies. I mean, the signs are everywhere. That's kind of how I felt when I was in Times Square, actually, in New York. A few years ago, we were there preaching a revival, and the signs are literally everywhere there. But if you watch prophetically what's going on, it is unbelievable the signs that are appearing everywhere. First of all, we're getting more, uh, literally, asteroids racing past the earth than we've ever had before, uh, meteorites impacting the earth, the small ones, fireballs breaking through the earth's atmosphere, and then, of course, there's other signs, strange signs. Some people even say fearful signs, cloud formations, and comets going by, all kinds of different prophetic events taking place in the cosmos. Well, today we're going to watch and learn about what the Bible says is coming in these last days. I'll be right back in just a moment. I'm so thankful to have this opportunity, folks, to tell you about a brand new music CD called The Journey. Every song has been absolutely godly inspired to touch the heart and soul of every person. Go to my website at paulbeckbyprophecy.com. Get it now because these songs will inspire you in your walk of life. The Journey, we're all on it, and this music CD will literally change your soul. All right, folks, all right. Now, Jesus told us there'd be signs in the heavens. And matter of fact, back in uh, 2017, there was even a sign that took place in September that was literally the sign, the wonder in the heaven uh, that was talked about in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. There's been a lot of different things people have seen in the Bible as well. But there's a prophecy that we've got to look at. And it's found in the book of Isaiah chapter 24 of the, about the things that's going to happen to the planet, the, in the heavens, and on the earth. Here's what the scripture says in chapter 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. And it shall be as with the people, so with the priest. As with the servant, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. As with the buyer, so with the seller. And as with the lender, so with the borrower. And as with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury. The land shall be utterly emptied and utterly spoiled, for the Lord hath spoken this word. Now, this event has never happened since the time Isaiah prophesied it in Isaiah 24. Many scientists have even looked at this scripture and believe it's referring to a pole shift when the magnetosphere or the magnetic poles shift. The planet itself is there, but the poles are shifting. When that happens, it literally changes the seasons of different locations on the planet. We know we've had the Ice Age. We know about these different things that have happened in, in historically during the creation. But this is an event that is coming upon the earth. Now, we're uh, actually, there are people who are studying what could be causing a pole shift. One of the things scientists are doing is they're studying a, a planet or a huge, what's called a binary system on the edges of our solar system that we can't see, but we know it must be there because of the gravitational pull, not only on the earth, but on the sun and on all the planets uh, that are in our solar system. They know, they can look at the calculations, they know it is happening. And the only way you could have that kind of a shift and a pull is if something larger than any of our planets or our sun is out there on the edge, gravitationally pulling us, sending waves of energy. Now, uh, I just recently seen where from NASA, uh, former NASA scientist Mike Brown, well-known, works at Caltech right now, just did an interview recently on uh, Coast to Coast where he said 
He is now staying in Hawaii, and every night he is, they've got a brand new telescope that has infrared uh, lenses on it. So every night he studies the stars. He studies and searches for this elusive planet. Now, it's, sometimes it's called planet number nine. That's what they're calling it right now in NASA. It's been referred to as planet X. It's even been called Nibiru by some of the ancient writings that we heard about. They say that this mysterious planet went by our solar system during the days of the plagues of Egypt. And so it was recorded by the Mayans in their ancient writings, by the Peruvians in their writings, by the, um, the Egyptians in their writings, by writings found in Asia. Also, of course, the New Testament gives you the effects of the, in the plagues of Egypt uh, in the Bible or in the Torah. So we know for sure something was happening globally. Even the uh, uh, North American Indians, though they didn't write it down, it was part of their legend that there was an event that happened that created major changes on the planet. So something's going to happen again according to Isaiah. He's prophesying some type of catastrophic, cataclysmic, or... Um, apocalyptic type event how bad is it we don't know but we can see that uh, their events are starting to happen now and the search is on if you go with me to chapter or the same chapter but go to verse 5 it says the earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they've transgressed the laws they've changed the ordinances they've broken the everlasting covenant therefore hath the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. Again, we're still talking about an end time apocalyptic scenario that is yet to take place in the Bible. And so we're watching and keeping an eye on what this may be. Matter of fact, look at verse 13. It looks as if Isaiah wants to give us some type of comparison. It says, When thus it shall be in the midst of the land, among the people there shall be as the shaking of an olive tree and as the gleaning of grapes when the vintage is done. So again, we see a reference to some kind of catastrophic event, some type of shaking. Matter of fact, Jesus said in Luke 21, he said, for there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. So we know that there's events coming, but check it out. Now, recently, in the last few years, there's been what they call the sounds of the apocalypse that have been heard in the heavens. And I actually even did some research on this. There a lot of people in different parts of the world heard sounds coming from the sky. Some of them, it sound like trumpets. Some of them sound like shofars. Some sound like drums beating. Some sound like stringed instruments or harps. Really strange. And people recorded it standing out in their yards. And so um, I began to study the word of the Lord. And look what it says in verse 16, again in Isaiah 24. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. So what Isaiah is saying is, yes, we're beginning to hear the sounds in the heavens, or we may be hearing songs in the heavens but understand there will be a treacherous time that will come up on this planet. It's not for you or me that are saved. I wanted you to understand something. The Lord has not appointed us unto wrath, okay? This is the, when the wrath of God comes, that is the punishment of God or that is the judgment of God upon the earth. And uh, that is not for the Christian. That's not for you. That's not for me. But that's not to say there won't be some catastrophic, cataclysmic events that the earth will go through even before the Lord comes for his bride. 
We're watching right now record earthquakes over the last seven years, record volcanoes erupting on the planet, uh, sinkholes opening up and swallowing buses and cars and houses and apartments. I mean, are you serious? We're looking at tidal waves, rogue waves, tsunamis from earthquakes. Uh, we're watching uh, strong straight line winds that blew a train off its track, blew the entire train bridge down in New Mexico with straight line winds of 100 miles an hour. We were watching a what they called a cyclone bomb hit in uh, Colorado and uh, brought to, uh, in, in Oregon, three and a half foot of snow in Oregon, uh, 97 mile an hour winds, snow blinding, uh, whiteouts uh, of a biblical scale. We've seen massive floodings in Nebraska near Omaha with icebergs floating down the swollen rivers. We've been witnessing all kinds of different hurricanes in the last few years. How can we forget Hurricane Harvey or Hurricane Maria or Hurricane Irma all in a 40-day period right after that solar eclipse that hit across America? I mean, there's signs everywhere in the heavens. And there's asteroids that are coming. The asteroid Apophis that's coming on Friday the 13th in the year 2029. That's, that's literally um, a four, four and a half football fields wide racing toward the earth. According to NASA, it will miss us barely, they hope. They put a 2.7% chance of impact unless it goes to what they call a gravitational keyhole. And then there's the, uh, but there's the rest of the story. These waves of energy from this binary system on the edges of our solar system are affecting the gravitational pull on everything, including the asteroids and the comets. So what I'm trying to tell you is, you're not going to stop prophecy. Let me read, let me just show you something. The same chapter, I'm in Isaiah 24. It's like, this chapter is like, a chapter that no one ever wants to read, but I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, it's here, and we're seeing the effects of it. Lightning strikes, unbelievable hail falling in different parts of the world, uh, uh, droughts of a biblical proportion, wildfires two years in a row in California, all-time worst ever in the summers, destroying 10,000 homes. I mean, are you serious? But look at this. Isaiah 24, verse 19 says, The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. It shall fall and not rise again. I'm saying all this to say this. You can't put your faith in planet earth you got to put your faith in Jesus Christ, okay? I'm not saying that you or I are actually going to be here to see some of this happen. Then again, I'm not saying we won't. I mean, it, obviously, if you lived in Bangladesh or if you lived in Japan in the record monsoons or if you were in the Philippines last year that got hit with 19 different typhoons in one year, this is insane. Uh, you would say it's the end of time. If you were living in the war-torn uh, Middle East and Syria when ISIS was uh, literally raging through there, you would say, this is it. It's tribulation. It, what I'm trying to tell you is all of these signs that are coming to pass are truly prophetically prophesied. Now, we've even got politicians saying that the world's going to end in the next 12 years because of green energy, or excuse me, not green energy, but from carbon. They want to go to green energy. They think man may be actually causing all of this chaos. But I think Isaiah was way before the, 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 that all took place. Mankind cannot make happen what Isaiah 24 says is coming. This is something beyond humanity. This is beyond any of us. This is all prophesied by God. The good news is you don't have to be here when this thing falls apart. I'll be right back and tell you about that in just a minute. May 11th in Cincinnati, Ohio, a powerful conference will take place. Stephen Bendenoon, Clyde Lewis, John Moore, and myself will be speaking on Planet X, Nibiru, the rising of the seawaters, a pole shift, what's causing the heavens to shake. You know, Jesus said they would in the last days. Go to my website, 
Get your ticket now. You want to be at this conference in Cincinnati, Ohio. The heavens are shaking. I'll see you then. All right, folks, all right. I promise you, I'm not going to leave you there in Isaiah 24, all right? But we do realize that in these end times, it's not just the physical things that are shaking the heavens. It's not just the signs in the heavens, but it's the signs among mankind on earth. Now, look at this. If you go to Luke 21, let's see what Jesus said. He was asked the question about the signs of the last days. Jesus kind of gave us a quick rundown when he said this in verse 8. In Luke 21, he said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and the time draweth near. Go ye not, therefore, after them. But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by. So there you see his words. Be not terrified, okay? Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And great earthquakes shall be in divers places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. We're going to be seeing, you'll be seeing things, everyone's going to see things in the heavens that's going to make them say, what is that? Now, and, and they will be great signs. They will be even fearful sights. And um, some people will be absolutely uh, terror, terrified because they don't have Christ. This is why Christ was saying to us, don't be terrified. Don't get upset. Don't be shaken. Don't, don't have the spirit of fear. This is just all part of it. What goes on in the spiritual world manifests as in the physical. Know that the end is near. And so look at verse 12. But before all of these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you and deliver you up into synagogues, into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. So this will be a part of it. There will be some persecution that will come. There will be some uh, attempts to derail people's faith in God. Matter of fact, Israel uh, is literally God's prophetic timepiece. Look what it says in verse 20. It says that when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And so he, he lets you know that there's going to be the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet. We know that the uh, peace deal is all oh, so close to its full revelation. We're, we know there will be some heavy negotiations. Will there be a two-state solution? Will it part the land of Israel? Will it include the building of the third temple? It seems as if these things are about to come before our very eyes, and we're watching very closely. But then Jesus says this. He goes to verse 25, which is a powerful passage of Scripture. He says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So there's going to be signs in the sun. There's going to be signs in the moon, the stars. Even the stars are going to fall from heaven like a fig tree cast its untimely figs when it's shaken of a mighty wind. Joel said in the last days there will be blood and fire and pillars of smoke and the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. Another scripture says before the great and notable day of the Lord shall come. So then you read on. Look what Jesus says in verse 26. Men's hearts fail in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. There's going to be, there is now, it's going to intensify a heavenly shaking going on. A preparation for the bride getting ready to join the bridegroom. Time is running out. And so, you know, in the last uh, all these years that we've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have never seen anything like this. Not only just the uh, apocalyptic signs, but we've never seen such diversity and change within cultural and social norms. It's beyond my ability to even comprehend. What was once considered uh, bad is now considered good. And what was once considered good is now called bad. 
We're witnessing a great falling away. We're witnessing a, a decay, a moral decay within the very fiber of the world. We're seeing that men love darkness rather than light and won't come to the light lest their deeds be reproved. We're watching sin and iniquity abound everywhere. But I'm glad that Paul said that where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. I'm glad to know that you can have the peace that passes all understanding inside your heart. I can't leave you hanging right here. We must read the next couple verses. So men's hearts are going to fail them for fear in verse 26, for looking after those things that are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, your redemption draweth nigh. I'm telling you, he's coming. He's coming with 10,000s of his saints to execute the judgment upon the earth. He's coming to get his bride. He's coming to get the redeemed of God. He's coming to wake the dead. This is a time like we've never seen before. And so keep looking up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Uh, keep believing in the power of the resurrection of Christ. Stand strong in your faith because it's going to be a time like we've never seen before. And as these events unfold, the church will go through one of the greatest revivals in history. It's going to start. People are going to be coming to Christ by the multitudes. Israel will see the, uh, the fullness of the revealing of the Messiah. I believe you'll see the greatest move of God in history. Matter of fact, if you just turn your Bible to Revelation with me just for a moment, in chapter 7, I believe it is, I'd like to show you what the Bible says is going to happen uh, in the end times. No, it's in Revelation. Um, give me one second here. Revelation 7. And, oh, Paul, you should have had that ready. I did. I do, I do have it. Okay. Revelation 7. Here's what it says. I'm not going to read the first few verses because it's simply this. The Lord says that he, he, he calls the four angels from the four corners of the earth and prepares them to get ready to blow up on the earth, to, to, to make a move up on the earth, to, to bring a, uh, the, the wrath of God on the earth. But before he does, he starts sealing 144,000 Jews, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Are you serious? And as he begins to choose them, he gets done. He, uh, 144,000. But here's the verse everyone forgets. He doesn't stop with 144,000, but he says in verse 9, After this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. So there's a great revival of 144,000 Jews, 12,000 from each nation. And then then there's this revival breaks out globally to the rest of the nations of the world, a multitude that no man could number from every nation, kindred, people, and tongues. They got white robes made white in the blood of the lamb. And the Bible said in verse 11, and all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts in heaven and they fell before the throne on their faces and they worshiped God saying amen blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power men might be unto our God forever and ever amen and I love this verse and one of the elders answered said unto me what are these that are arrayed in these white robes whence came they and he said sir thou knowest and he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These are the resurrection. This is the, uh, what they call the tribulation saints. These are those that have come out of great tribulation. These are those that have been saved in that final hour. These are days that got saved in the last day re revival. So it's not just the 144,000 from the nation of Israel, the Jews from the 12 different tribes around the world, but it's, a, it's the Gentiles as well. 
just like the book of Acts. It was the Jews, 120 of them, that got the uh, baptism of the fire of the Holy Ghost on the birth of the early church in Jerusalem. And then thousands more were saved before finally Cornelius received the Holy Ghost over by Caesarea along the Mediterranean when Peter visited him. So the Jews had revival first and then the Gentiles worldwide. The same thing is going to happen in the last days. The 144,000 Jews getting saved, followed by a worldwide revival. It's the last days. It's the end times. I'm going to be right back in just a moment. Are you serious? Are you serious? I'll be right back. May 11th in Cincinnati, Ohio, a powerful conference will take place. Stephen Bendenoon, Clyde Lewis, John Moore, and myself will be speaking on Planet X, Nibiru, the rising of the seawaters, a pole shift, what's causing the heavens to shake. You know, Jesus said they would in the last days. Go to my website, get your ticket now. You want to be at this conference in Cincinnati, Ohio. The heavens are shaking. I'll see you then. Praise God, praise God. All, I'm telling you, folks, this is it, okay? It's this exciting. It's this powerful. It's, you know what it is? We're, we've turned the corner. We're on the stretch run. We're coming to the end. But not everybody's running the race. Not everybody's in here. Not everybody is ready to go. And I want to encourage everybody watching to tell others about these programs. Get them here on these, on these great programs every week at this same time, this same station. Tell them. God is moving and revelation knowledge being revealed. There may be some watching even right now that aren't saved. I would love for you to give your life to Christ. Call upon his name and ask him to come into your heart and be saved. You can do this if you'll just accept Christ as your savior. Please ask him into your heart in Jesus' name. And, you know, you can go to my website. I would love for you to go and find out what's going on. Uh, we're, we're seeing people saved on a daily basis. We do live broadcasting. Go to my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. I do a live show every day from 12 noon to 2 p.m. Eastern. Talk about all the current world events, the news, and how they relate to the biblical prophecies. It's an incredible experience, and you can be a part of it in the chat rooms. Plus, I got a lot of material and things you can read about uh, and, and opportunities for you, including joining my uh, school of prophecy or maybe you want to go with me to Israel. There's just so much you can do. I want you to know that we love you, we respect you, and we want to lift you up before the name of the Lord. And if you'd like to help us, it would be wonderful. You could certainly just become a partner of Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries. Go to our website, and there you'll find out how to get involved in the things that God is doing. You want to be a part of this end-time revival.